So what do you get when you combine Crockett and Jones and Chelsea Boots? You get a pretty good video review. Coming up! Welcome back everyone, it's Kostas again from Mishu Academy and the Noble Shoe and today I got brand new content and something you've been asking me even more since I posted my Coniston review. You want more Crockett and Jones? It's, it's just how it is. So, this week I had a good client of mine, a good friend of mine, Mike, who decided to buy a really nice pair of Chelsea boots from Crockett and Jones and a model I hadn't seen before, the Lingfield. It's a black Chelsea boot, as you can see here, and it surprised me quite a bit. And from the moment I opened the box, I'm like, before I send it, I really must do a video review about it. So, today we're going to talk about the model, the last, the details, how should you size, and if it's worth your money or not. All right, let's get straight into things, right? Uh, what we've got here is uh, the classic Rocket and Jones box. Uh, actually, this one seems to be a bit newer than the last one I reviewed, and it seems to be a little more sturdy. Since this is not a hand grade model, it comes with uh, green dust bags, which are actually quite large, as you can see. Let me hold it for you. Pretty large ones. Uh, very good, very good quality, they feel great. And of course you've got your shoes here. Uh, it's a Chelsea, so it doesn't come with any, you know, laces or things like this. Inside, you always got, you know, this little thing to support the cap toe, or sorry, the toe area, and keep it structured. Uh, what about the shoes themselves? Uh, as I said, they're really, really sleek. I didn't expect that from Crockett and Jones, even though they have some really sleek models. First of all, you can see the last here, very nice square toe, quite sharp as well, not as soft as I would expect, you can see it more here, really nice. And when you look at the sides, especially here, you can see that it's, it's not exactly flat here, but it's very, very structured along these lines. It reminds me of the Carlos Santos 389, I really like this. And of course, this is whole black. There's no contrasting colors, uh, including the, the outsole, including the, the rubber on the side. has a pretty big pull tab, which I can see being a little annoying for some people that, uh, you know, their trousers uh, get bunched up at that area. Uh, inside is very difficult to show you, but uh, pretty nice lining, well trimmed. And the leather smells great. The leather smells how full grain, new, calf leather should smell like. And it is buttery soft. It is really soft. I'm very surprised. Well, not surprised, but I'm very happy with it. Um, as well, stitching wise, uh, it's, I mean, it's very hard to show details from this, uh, but everything is really nice and tidy here. And including here, also on the welt, is very, very well trimmed. And let's check the bottom. So, as you can see the bottom, of course, Goodyear welted. Uh, it's a main line, so it's not closed channel. Actually, very nice uh, heel cap here. And I can see that... Let me check it out. I mean, the, the stitching is, is perfect around the edges and it's very close to the sole. So it's well trimmed and it's very neat, I would say. I am, uh, I am impressed. I'm impressed. This, uh, th there's not really so... this slight beveling here, there's no really, you know, fiddle back here. Let's check the other one as well quickly. Felt really good to the touch. I think Mike will be extremely happy. And uh, as I said, I'm really surprised about uh, this last. Uh, the last 348, I think it was launched in 2004 and for for a British brand, this is quite forward-thinking, you know, because when you think of English shoes, you think about, you know, route and lass, country shoes, chunkier lass, but this is, what do you say, back then, forward-thinking, it's really good. And I like because it gives, it shows that even, you know, a British brand, a traditional British brand, can be daring and can produce something that has a more, let's say, Italian, Mediterranean look to it, and I'm like, look at me. Very good. I am, uh, I am extremely happy with this. Wow. So let's discuss sizing. 
And that was it. We got a really nice pair of black Chelsea boots here. It's really sleek. I mean, James Bond wears it, right? And it is a quite unusual thing or not so usual thing to put a more square toe on such a pair of shoes. I think it works really well. Uh, very importantly, how does it fit? So this is the 348 last, which is almost 20 years old by now, about 60. And uh, you know what? It works really well. It gives it a really nice shape. And I would say it fits pretty close to the 337. It has a bit more elongated profile and you will find that you might have a little bit of extra space on the front, but uh, it doesn't really matter, like an inch or half an inch. I wouldn't really size down unless you already size down for those lasts or you're worried that they might look too long on your feet. That is quite possible in, in smaller sizes, but I would wear it true to size. So for me, that would be a UK 8. And uh, what about uh, availability? Uh, obviously, Crockett & Jones. Uh, if you're in the US, I would probably buy it from a EU retailer. Uh, you can find it in the Noble Shoe, of course, as, as well as other official retailers uh, in the uh, EU. This would cost you about 519 US dollars, including free shipping. It also comes in dark brown. Honestly, I am very surprised. I... If you follow the channel, you probably know how I feel about Crockett & Jones and the price range. It is maybe a little overpriced uh, due to the origin and the heritage and uh, a lot of other factors. However, the moment I opened up this one, I don't know, there's something about the shape, there's something about the leather, there's something about the smell. It just felt really good. It felt really good. And you know what? If you're looking for a very sleek black Chelsea boot uh, with a nice low profile and not the usual of a British aesthetic, this is great. I can actually recommend this. So if you're interested, send me a mail, send me a message, or just leave a comment and I will fix it up for you. Uh, until then, I hope Mike gets some really good use out of it, especially when the pandemic is over. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, sort of preview. And if you did, please leave a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more content. I really appreciate it. And stay for about one more minute for a really horrible dad joke of the week. Another week, another bad dad joke. So, what do you call Bob the Builder when he retires? Well, Bob, you call him Bob. <laughs> what did you expect? Thank you very much for your submissions. I look forward to the comments and your emails about the next horrible dad joke. Please, submit your worst. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.